Uh, my name is Jeff Sugimoto, and I lead uh, business development and tech sales for our web and internet customers here at Nokia. We're super happy to be back at NFT and interacting with Tom and the delegates today. This time around, we're going to be focusing our discussion on our data center networking solution. And it's my pleasure to open up the first uh, bit of the session, give you an introduction to uh, what we're going to see in the highlights for the rest of the two hours. So in case you missed it, we launched the solution in July of 2020, so July of, of last year. And we came to market with a full solution, including three major parts you're seeing on the right-hand side of the slide here. And the intention of this morning is to go through each one of these parts. Uh, we have our experts on hand to talk about how they work, what their value is, and as much as we can, we're going to demo and show you that how all this stuff works live. So the first part is about fabric automation and tooling, and this is our uh, fabric manager, and we call it the Nokia Fabric Services System, or FSS. And this is an intent-based system that's really designed to manage the entire life cycle of your data center fabric. So that means from day zero, your planning, to your deployment, to your operations going forward. And a little later on, my colleague Fanny is going to give us uh, a tour of FSS, including what, it, what it's like to live through the life of a fabric using the tool. The second part of it is our open OS, and we call that SR Linux. And we were very lucky at Nokia to uh, have partnered with some uh, key design partners in, in coming up with this product, uh, namely uh, some hyperscalers in the Bay Area, some elite DevOps shops. And what we did was listen to them very carefully on what problems they were trying to solve today and where they saw the networks going tomorrow. And we took that input as the genesis to building what SR Linux is. So at the end of the day, we, we came in with an open, open pad. We, we had made no assumptions of what was going in there other than we were using our 20 years of experience in networking, our protocol stacks, but everything else was, was no assumptions made. We started from scratch. And at the end of the day, what the result was, was a purpose-built NOS that's really designed for hyperscalers and large uh, elite DevOps shops. But we took a package and we deliver it so it's consumable for everyone. So we like to say it's a hyperscaler NOS for everyone. And the last part of this is our hardware platforms. And although we, we are, of course, designed to do a uh, white box, uh, we have a full integrated uh, solution or a uh, hardware lineup with modular and fixed configuration platforms. So I wanted to take a few moments to uh, just share some pers more perspective on our journey and how we think we're differentiating in this space. And what this chart shows is a, a rough timeline of networking, and I'm going to overlay some system architecture things onto this picture, but it shows a journey from the connectivity era on the left to the automation era, which is present day today. And you can see how the curve goes. We've built functionality moving toward the automation area till we get to the point where we're present day. And I think there's pretty much no argument in the industry right now at 2020, 2021, we're in the automation era. Enough uh, multi-vendor support, plugins, data modeling, abstractions, protocols, SDN systems exist that I think automation is truly possible. But the interesting observation that we made and when we're working with our design partners is how we got to the automation era. And this is where we start weaving in some of the system architecture components. Because what the industry really did to get to the automation era was add protocols and interfaces to an architecture that wasn't initially conceived to do automation. And it certainly wasn't conceived to add on and iterate on these interfaces as much as we've needed to through, uh, through time to get to the automation era. And as we're bolting these features on, I mean, we achieve automation, but the observation really is that there are trade-offs. So, and this was, these trade-offs was really the genesis for SR Linux. And what our design partners were telling us is that to achieve their next set of goals, and we're defining it as another era called the NetOps era, which is, you know, moving faster, moving easier, and moving more quickly and elevate what the things you can automate what you really needed to do was get rid of the trade-offs. So what we're doing at, at Nokia is taking the fundamentals, the best parts of that automation era, but we're rewriting the infrastructure. We're rewriting all the code around it to support that automation era to fix the trade-offs, namely being 
fully customizable, way more customizable than we think is available on the market today. And those customization features are available at a rate that you can consume faster. We designed for full scale and performance. And above all, uh, we made this as easy as possible to use. So I can get a little bit more prescriptive on what I'm talking about on this slide. Um, show you some tangible examples. So on the left-hand side of the slide, you see uh, SR Linux, which is of course our NOS and hardware. And uh, it's expected in modern times to have a data abstraction layer so we can uh, work with uh, different uh, forwarding silicon. And that of course is there. Jeff, can but I I'll... ask a question? Sure. Um, is this SR Linux built from scratch or is the Alcatel Lucent OS used as foundation? No, oh, it's built off uh, CentOS Linux, so unmodified kernel, and we wrote the infrastructure around it in the, in the user space. Yeah, <laughs> it's, does that answer your question? Yes, it does. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Most of the work inside of SR Linux was done to support these applications. So for us, these applications are going to show as uh, circles. So these are, for a, an example, protocol. So this is your IP, BGP, it's your VPN, this is your MPLS. And uh, on the Nokia system, these are these are, are our uh, SROS protocols. So the 20 years of pedigree go into these green circles. What one of the key things we did was package those images with not only the, the, the functionality of that protocol, but also with how to manage it. So when you package these two, they couple these two things together, they become discrete elements. And you can start doing some cool things with them. Like, for instance, something easy is just adding and subtracting them. So if you had a choice of six protocols, of course, you can load only what you need. Right? This is something that we, we see on other systems, but it's very easy for us to do. But some new things you can do is start controlling the behaviors of things when they fail. So you can start managing the life cycle of it. So on if an application fails, you can control whether you reboot the whole system, whether you reboot... Uh, uh, you don't reboot the whole system, you put it on pause, you retry, you, you, you just keep the process down. And this was surprisingly an important thing for our, our customer base because they, they made it clear to us that we couldn't assume what protocols were important to them. Their safe, the safety of their network and the behavior of their network was something they control, was bespoke to them and their applications and environments. So adding this functionality on what to do to manage the life cycle was key. Hey, Jeff, uh, Chris here, I got a question. Um, specifically, back to your point about being built off CentOS, uh, with the recent Red Hat changes, um, how do you see that impacting SR Linux? Um, you know, does that move towards a RHEL model? Um, does it go to CentOS Stream? Uh, does it go to Rocky? <laughs> where, where, where do you guys see the direction going there? So, uh, yeah, there was a, a bit of a curveball for us, unfortunately. Um, Thankfully, the way the way we're managing packages internally, CentOS Stream doesn't really hurt us that much. It allows us to just take snapshots and manage the packages we're using ourselves. We were pretty much heading down that road anyway. It was just the uh, the catalyst we needed to uh, to kind of make it happen in the short term. So, the current direction is that we're going to adopt CentOS Stream. Um, in fact, that that recently that merge just recently happened. You can also add functionality when you need it. So if you wanted to replace our BGP stack, there's a green circle here before with your own Go BGP or whatever you want. The system's architected to do that. And you can add uh, your own applications as agents onto the box as well. So normally that's done through a, what we all call an SDK. We've rebranded it as an NDK, a NetOps development kit from a little bit of marketing. But uh, this is going to be a highlight of uh, other demo. So Erwin's going to show you some of the capabilities here live. And we think we have some differentiators in how easy the NDK is to use and, and what the agents have access to on the box is, is a wider landscape of information, which we think increases uh, the usefulness of writing agents here. And we're going to show you, Erwin's going to show you a, a demo on uh, an agent that solves a real uh, real life yeah, use case and problem. So we're, we're looking forward to showing you that. The other thing here is just making everything easy to consume. So when we package the agents and our management layer like we do, it doesn't matter to us whether, or to the operator, whether the application or protocol comes from us or from you or from open source. If you're, what you're gonna see in our demos, if you have a CLI, you're able to configure, to show commands, or stream telemetry from any one of these agents, whether you wrote it, we wrote it, was open source, 
like it was it was packaged originally from us. So total transparency and uniformity from the management layer, from the CLI, from our GMI, GRPC. It also enforces that everything on the system is uniform. We can get, set, read, and stream telemetry from everything. We're, we think we have an expansive telemetry infrastructure with this architecture that, uh, that uh, our customer base is really resonating with. So if I move from the one node picture here to more of a network and fabric picture, we can start talking about FSS. Hey, the, sorry uh, to interrupt here. Chris, again, uh, asking a question and kind of going back to the slide about the general you know, architecture of SR Linux and where it sits with Nokia. Um, do you foresee SR Linux replacing traditional SROS, you know, the Time Metro stuff and the ALU stuff on the routing side or on the like traditional routing side, or is it going to stay with the data center switching portfolio? Kind of where do you see that living? Uh, they're going to live in parallel. They're, they're filling they're in different lanes right now. So the SROS is an expansive feature set, right? It does things like triple play, BNG, things that we don't normally see or need in the data center. Uh, for the foreseeable future. So SROS is going to stay in its lane. It's uh, tightly coupled with our powerful custom silicon on that side as well. So our FB4 and whatever comes next on that side. There will be some overlapping features between SROS and SRL, but SRL is really targeted to data center and more uh, lightweight kind of lean routing that you'd see in the data center or in uh, lean internet pops and things like that. So they, they complement each other. They reuse the same protocols, but uh, different lanes. Okay. Uh, so I'll just quickly touch on uh, the FSS platform. So we already talked about how it does day zero to day one to day two, which is day zero on the design. So Fanny's going to talk about intent templates here and how to get your design, uh, your network design very quickly. Of course, how to deploy. We have in day two change, we have some interesting uh, tooling, some innovative tooling called Digital Sandbox. And uh, I know we're gonna spend some time on this. It's a, a, a network emulation tool. So it allows you to have a safe place to try out changes, visualize your network uh, before it hits the real network. So we think it'll have a big impact on how folks look at change management with our system. And then the right-hand side of the side here, the day two plus is uh, about monitoring and analyzing. And as I mentioned on the last slide, one of the greatest powers of SR Linux is getting a ton of information uh, out of the box at very high capacities, very high performance as far as, as far as streaming telemetry. And Fanny and the team have put an incredible amount of thought on how to consume that and process that to analyze for insights and to do proactive operations. And I know Fanny's gonna walk through a lot of these thoughts in his sections a little bit later on.